Hello! Today I'm going to talk about all the null binding needles that I have and I'll show you all of them and give like mini reviews. So let's start with my favourite uh, wooden ones. So we have uh, these three. Um, I got this one at uh, Husfliden in Trondheim. It was my first needle and it is 11 and a half, almost 12 uh, centimeters. And yeah, I, I really like it. It has a little groove at the back here to make space for more yarn when you're push, pushing it through. And it works very well. Um, then we have this one, which I bought at Sustenandriana. This is, um, that's a sort of cheap interior shop. Uh, this is a um, weaver's needle. Um, which is why it's very sharp at the one end and um, like equally narrow so it's um, it's a simple needle it works very well when I do tiny stitches that need to be uh, tightened to the needle because it doesn't get wider at the back and then we have my first needle that I bought like that I got as a gift and uh, was made by like a, a maker a, a well-known um, null binding needle maker. Uh, so this was made by William Solberg, who has for the last couple of years taken a break from making uh, making needles, but I think he will be back soon. Uh, so that's good. It's a bit more fat um, than this one, as you can see. It's also like very blunt at the end here, and it's since it's a little bit flat it's very comfortable to push through with the heel like the back, the palm of your hand um, it has a three holes I usually just use the two uh, I find that three holes is too much um, but yeah it's a big needle uh, let's see it is about 15 centimeters long um, so these are the two main lengths of needle that I use, uh, like 11 and a half ish and um, 15. This is for sort of, sort of, this makes for more relaxed working and this is more, de like this helps me do more detail. Um, this one is about the same length as the other short one. So that's like, yeah, 11 and a half. So yeah, these are the ones that I keep in my private collection um, and that I use for different projects. And then uh, we can move on to the ones I have in case anyone wants to learn. <laughs> so um, let's see here. This one is the other one from the set from Sister Negrena. It is longer, but it's also thin and I'm scared it'll break, <laughs> so I, it feels flimsy to me. It's 16 and a half centimeters long, and yeah, um, since it's so flimsy, I don't feel comfortable working with this one really, but some people might like it, so I'm holding on to it in case I meet someone who wants to learn and who wants to have this needle. Then we have the ones I've made myself, which are mm, <laughs> not very good, uh, let's be honest. Um, they're all like the shorter variant, but you can see the length varies a little. So uh, this one, the lo longest one is like 10 and a half centimeters. And then I guess this one is the shortest one, which is about eight and a half. Um, the holes like the eyes of the needles aren't very big at all, um, so it's not very easy to thread them. Uh, and it's, yeah, I mean, they're pretty soft and I've tried to go, go with the grain, but there are spots like this one where they're just, where they might snag. Um, so, I mean, they're okay. I think uh, that's what I would say. I made them out of juniper which is a very hard sort of wood and that helped me quite a lot when like making them because then you can make them quite um, like smooth at the end um, and with 
little chance of tearing or splintering. But mm, I didn't do a great job. I am not a woodworker. <laughs> but I have these needles in case anyone wants uh, to have one for free. and uh, Or maybe like at a cost, uh, I might take some money for them. But yeah, I'm not a, a needle maker uh, by any stretch of the word. And then we have these three needles, uh, which are from Snyder Spindles. Uh, they have an Etsy shop. My spindles are all from him, or, well, all but one are from him. Um, and these are made by, like, these are made using a laser cutter and then sanded. And then there's no more finish than that. Um, this means that the needle, like, you're not, it, the, hmm. The grain isn't being followed. So it's just sanded and it feels very smooth. But when you start using them, uh, you can start to see little like tears and splintering. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah. So these are slightly cheap uh, for null binding needles. They go for about $5, five and a half, something like that, five, six dollars. And yeah, um, I think they're worth it at the price, but I would probably recommend lacquering or putting some sort of coat on the outside to prevent snags. Um, because yeah, just because of the way they're made, uh, they don't like prevent that. Um, so these are very much in, I feel like these are in the same category. These are very uneven. But these ones uh, may also snag on your yarn um, the same way these might. Um, but they're like fine, cheap and fine. Um, so yeah, those are my might giveaway <laughs> needles. And then the last <laughs> wooden needle I have is this one, which is an emergency needle. And I just wanted to include it for curiosity's sake because <laughs> this one. Oh, by the way, I forgot to measure these. So it's nine, just over nine centimeters long. Uh, the one from Snyder Spindles. Okay, so this one I made using scissors and <laughs> the wooden disposable cutlery that you find um, in some cafes. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I was I was able to null bind with this, but it's very wide, a uh, little bit too wide for my taste, and very thin, as you can see. And to get to get this through and to like be able to push it through, I used this like a stirring stick um, <laughs> to help just push it through the loops because this is bigger than my thumb in some cases. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I guess, yeah, this just shows you can be resourceful. Uh, I've taped the whole thing to avoid splinters and breakage. Um, but yeah, this was uh, interesting. Let's let's just say interesting. <laughs> and then let's move on to some metal needles. So this one is just a normal like knitter's needle. Um, it's just over six and six and a half centimeters long, and yeah, it's. I usually use it to like uh, weave in ends, ends, and end the project. Um, I sometimes use this for that as well. This is a weaver's needle uh, in metal, and I bought that at Panduro Hobby, I think, like a hobby shop. Um, it has like a triangular um, point, which is quite like sharp, not very sharp, but like a little sharp. And this is great if you want to make teensy tiny, tiny stitches where you want to tighten to the th to the needle. But I find these really inc uncomfortable to push through and also to pull through. So. 
I, yeah, I don't prefer working with this, but I might use it to weave in ends at the end. Um, yeah. So now we come to my bone needles. I have no horn needles, but these are my bone needles. Um, oh yeah, the weaver's needle. Let's see. Oh, stars. Um, okay. My weaver's needle is 15 centimeters long, so equally long as this one. Um, yeah, so this is my newest needle, a tiny, tiny one that I keep on this uh, necklace to go through, go around my neck. And that way I am reminded that I am a null binder <laughs> and it's fun. And also I have an emergency needle in case I ever find myself in dire need of one, so I don't have to make one of these again. <laughs> um, it is rather tiny, it's the smallest one I have, well, except this one, which I've only used at the very beginning when I hadn't bought my own uh, specific null binding needle. It is seven centimeters long, tiny, tiny thing. Um, <clears throat> and. I tried using it earlier today and it is definitely possible and some people even prefer these tiny needles especially for Coptic stitch which is very detailed. Um, I tended to push it through <coughs> excuse me I tended to push it through with like my uh, middle finger or my ring finger or both in in connection to each other so not like the palm of my hand or anything but yeah it worked fine uh, I could uh, work with this over a period of time and it would be probably no problem. This is one of my favorite, um, well, was one of my favorite needles before I got this one. <laughs> but yeah, it is, it has a very, I don't know how to explain this. Um, the end is very blunt, but also very s narrow. So in some of these, uh, the um, the end is rather like broad as well, uh, but this one is narrow and I love it for stitches where you do more picking. So, um, Dalby stitch, for example. Um, it is, let's see, 11 centimeters long. So it, uh, pairs nicely with this one and it's just a question of which one I want to use. But since this one is round at the edge and this one is flat at the edge, that sometimes influences my choice. Um, then we have this one, which I bought this summer and it is 14 centimeters long, about like three, yeah, approximately 14 centimeters long. And it is a very good alternative for a more sort of relaxed, um, relaxed version of like, if I was using this, I, I'm sort of less relaxed than with a longer needle. And this one is equally narrow, but still uh, longer and um, leads to me being more relaxed. So um, these two are made by um, Nrune Lyset, who is in Viking Valley, Gudvangen. And I'm very happy with the, the needles. I'm, I bought them both uh, like this year. This one I got at a Viking market that was being held outside of um, the Viking Ship Museum in Oslo. Um, so, yeah. Um, so these are all my needles. Um, <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. Also, yeah. A great thing about this needle, it has two holes, and I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or thoughts, let me know in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>